a side-by-side -side model. Our subject for this evening, the future is in your hands. And we're gonna be talking from the subject, change, opportunity, vision, impact, and diversity in the year of 2023. How many of us know that the future is in our hands? And as I talk this morning, I want to uh, bring your attention to our first uh, subject, which is change. And our scripture is coming from Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, verses 11. And I encourage you on this evening to get a pen and paper and take notes, as this is some very good information for you and for you to share with others. As we talk about the futures in our hand, uh, we've just dealt with COVID, um, the pandemic, and it had a major impact on the black church. Churches of all sizes struggle getting their members back to church. Churches had to deal with the struggles of the pandemic. Not that we, not only do we have to deal with the struggles of the pandemic in the workplace, in our household, but we also had to deal with it in the church. Post-pandemic churches everywhere struggle to grow and to survive. And today I'm going to talk about just what we need as a church body in order to survive and move forward after the pandemic. And it first starts with our first subject of this morning, change. And our scripture text comes from Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, 11th verse. And I'll be reading from the International Verge. For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Christians everywhere face difficult situations today and take comfort in Jeremiah 21, 29 and 11, knowing that it is not the promise to immediately rescue us from hardship and suffering, but rather the promise that God has planned for our lives regardless of our current situation. He can work through it and allow us to prosper and give us hope. When the pandemic came along, it created a dark day. It was a dark day for the whole world. When COVID first came barreling into the United States in March of 2020, it impacted the black church that was nothing short of being a catastrophe. Yes, it was dark and the churches were empty. Here we go. We had people that were losing their jobs. People were dying everywhere, dying and not even having funerals. People everywhere was feeling the effects. They was experiencing the impact of COVID on their personal lives. Sad to say, Pastors were getting calls from everywhere. They were receiving grief COVID calls, stating that their parish uh, parishioners, that their family, their, their friends were being affected by this dreaded disease. Everyone had to scramble just to stay alive, to keep things going, whether it was on the workplace and yes, even the church. And it did not return the same. Some may wonder if the church would ever come back or if it would ever turn or would it ever be the same? As I look back and as I think, it's clear that the church as an institution had experienced a radical transforming over the last three years. In other words, we experienced change. Not only has the church changed, but I want you to know today, people of God, 
that we survive. But for those that had a plan, my God, my God, they thrive. So many houses of worship across the country had to learn how to expand, how to grow, how to make it work. For some, they thought it was impossible. But God made a way. The church never stopped being the church because we had to leave the building. Instead, in the era of COVID, we became what I would call adaptive. In other words, we had to take time and reimagine, reimagine or reimaging <clears throat> for those that had success, reimaging was the solution. In other words, they changed. In other words, they survived. In other words, they grew. Listen, people of God, growth does not happen by accident but requires a vision, a thought, and a strategy. Successful churches are those that follow a God-given vision and a mission. They define the steps to get there and implement and calculate a plan of attack. Listen here, people of God. Change is nothing to fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Change can teach us to adapt. It helps us develop. Not only does it do that, if we understand our capacity to grow and to learn, change aids us in that process. Change makes us better. When change makes us better, it's because we have learned to turn our challenge, or should I say challenging situations to our own advantage. Not merely because change happens, Change is gonna happen. That is one of life constants. We are going to experience change, whether it's on the workplace, whether it's in our household, whether it's in our job, on our jobs, or even in the church. Some may say, why is change important in the church? Well, people of God, I'm glad we asked that question. God does not change, but he is constantly renewing and adapting his methods to reach the people with his message. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But we must not forget Isaiah 43 and 19, where it tells us, forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. See, I am doing a new thing. My God, my God, my God. Then it challenges us in that verse to spring up and do not precede it. Change is necessary to deliver the message of Jesus to a very diverse audience. <clears throat> Listen here, people of God. My God, my God, my God. Change can open doors and presents opportunities that normally would not have been there without change. People of God, we have to learn to embrace change. Embracing change makes many things possible. It allows us to meet new people. 
It allows us to enjoy new experiences. It develops new skills and present new ideas. We have the opportunity with change to learn new knowledges, get more information. And in the process, what's our outcome? We achieve a great feat. Change is inevitable. People of God, we experience life. Life is full of changes. Circumstance change, culture change, our style change, laws change, the weather change. <clears throat> Some changes are good, others are bad. But we must accept change, live with it, deal with it, and adapt to it. My God, my God, my God. Ironically, the very people who should embrace change often resist it. Some may not want to hear this, but those in the church those in the church sometimes resist change us as christians maybe it's because we're confusing the truth with tradition or customs maybe we're using human methods instead of the divine and receiving the divine message obviously god's word does not change and we should remain true to the unchanging principles and righteousness of godliness. But I want you to consider this. Christian growth requires change. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter 3 and 18, we are commanded to grow in grace and in knowledge when we become christians there was a change in our lives a change in our relationship we moved from being serving satan to serving the lord our thinking changed our thinking should have changed to emulate the attitude of Jesus. God expects a change in our lifestyle. People of God, if you don't change, you don't grow. If we don't grow, we are not really living. See, we have to understand, my God, my God, my God. We have to understand Jesus came that we might enjoy abundant life, a full life, a complete life with him. Failure to grow or change will result in a life that is stagnant, static, and unfulfilling. No Christian can grow and stay in the same place. I'm going to say that again. No Christian can grow and stay in the same place. Neither can the church. People, the church that grows makes changes. They adjust their methods. They alter their approach. We always say, or you hear this quite often, that church is a business. How many of us know a business that never change will eventually go out of business? And I had to ponder on that. As I ponder on it, I got to thinking about those things that are really close to me or related to me. As, as a coach, I realized a sports team 
that doesn't change will find themselves at the bottom of the league standings. <clears throat> and then I got to thinking, what's the use of having a nice stadium with a team that cannot execute? A church that won't change will start to see empty pews. So I ask you this question on this evening in that study, in our study. Do you want to grow? Do you want to be stronger, stronger as a Christian? Let's even take it out of the church realm. Do you want to be more devoted, a more devoted wife? a more devoted husband, a healthier person. Do we as a body of Christ, do we want to be a better church? The answer is found in one word, change. Listen here, people of God. We can't change the weather. And you may not be able to change others, but you can change you. People of God know that your future is in your hands and it's going to require us to change. I can stay here for a little bit longer, but I'm going to keep moving let's move on our next is opportunities the bible tells us in galatians 6 and 10 therefore as we have opportunities let us do good to all people especially those who belong in the family of believers. See, COVID has propelled people towards life changes of all kinds over the past two years. Everything from career shifts to new relations, and some even had to relocate. Some changes have been out of necessity, and some are out of priority. But how many of us know opportunities are available for all occasions and situations that makes it possible to do something that we that you want to do or that you have to do or possible doing something to impact the lives of the lost and believers. The Bible tells us in Matthew 28 and 19. Start at the 19th verse. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to follow all that I command you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of age. People of God, my God, my God, my God. We have to understand, Jesus Christ had given us two important tasks for his people. The first one is the great commandment, which is found in Mark 12 and 30 and 30. Love God with all your heart, your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself then he followed it the second one the great commission which is found in matthew 28 starting at the 18th verse he said preach the gospel and make disciples all around the world see these two commandments are important because all believers are called to be ambassadors for Christ. 
the Bible tells us to be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. If you don't believe me, it's found in 1 Peter 3 and 15. This means every obedient follower of Jesus is called to participate in the Great Commission. My God, my God, my God. We have to, we have to understand the beauty of the body of Christ is that God uses everyone in a slightly different way. All of us have unique qualities and talents. Each of us possess them and are to use it to create a beautiful tapestry, which is known as the body of Christ. In other words, the church. These opportunities are not about competing. I'm gonna say that again. These opportunities are not about competing, whether it's with the ministry down the street or it's with others inside the walls of the church. But it's more about developing the people of God that has been planted in our local church to be used by God with their unique gifts. I believe that people are called to a church with a, with a purpose, with a specific purpose. We are all on a journey and the church helps us develop as Christians and supports our unique calling. I recall the Bible saying in James 2 and 18, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my words, my God, my God, my God, my God. James continues to make the point that we living faith in Christ results in believers beginning to participate in good works. That's it. Christians begin to obey your father and love other believers as they love themselves. God gives us opportunities, opportunities to grow, opportunities to serve, and he expect us to do good works. And as Christians, it is our responsibility to apply our gifts to the opportunities that are there for us in the body of Christ. Let me keep moving. We move to V, which is vision. Our scripture for vision comes from Habakkuk 2 verses 2 and 3. And it reads, then the Lord said to me, write my answer plainly on a tablet so that the runner can carry the correct message to others. This vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. It seems it if it seems slow in coming, wait patiently, for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. Here, Habakkuk offers hope 
but I recognize how dark and chaotic the world is. And it invites us to trust God. People of God, a God-given vision lines up with the truth. And we as Christians, we need to seek wisdom through prayer, through reading the word, and through wise counsel. Remember, God has wired us with great ideas and great skills. It is amazing that God of this huge universe allows us to use those skills to move his story and to move his kingdom forward. But in order to do so, we need to make sure that we are close enough and in, in touch enough with our big God <clears throat> to know that we can work for him and not have it the other way around. There's an awesome book and it's called if you have not read it, I will encourage you to get it. It is an awesome book. It is entitled uh, Purpose Driven. It is entitled uh, Purpose Driven by the author Rick Warren. In this book, Purpose Driven Life, Pastor Rick Warren reveals the meaning of life from a Christian perspective. He said there are five purposes that you were created by God to fulfill. First purpose is to worship. Second, unselfishly fellowship. The third was spiritual maturity. Then he identified in the last two, your ministry and your mission. In this book, Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren, he compared the church to a living organism. He said it is natural for it to grow if it's healthy. But if the church is not healthy, it's not growing and it's dying. Wow. That is a scary concept, not only for the church, but also for the person. People of God, I understand that life comes with many challenges. But the exciting thing about that is with God, all things are possible and god gives us wisdom freely we have to understand that some churches and some people are not growing simply because we get too comfortable with the way things are and we don't do anything to change the status quo Maybe, maybe that's you. Maybe it's the church that you're attending. Maybe it's not. But on this evening, I want you to ask yourself, who could benefit from a particular church body that is stagnated? Wow. if I may use as analogy, water, when it's stagnated, it's messy. It can make you sick. In other words, it stuns your growth and causes you to perish. Spiritual stagnation is the kind of dying 
that leads to death. If I may use a quote from our state supervisor, she constantly says we have to keep it moving. We have to move forward. We have to have a vision that takes us to the next level. Whether it's in the church, whether it's in your personal walk, we have to have a vision to move us. Let's keep it moving because I'm already running out of time. Our next subject, impact. My God, my God, my God. Our scripture comes from Romans 13 and 11. And do this, understanding the present time, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumbers because our salvation is now, near now than when we first believed. There's an old saying, if you plan, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. That is a true statement in business as well as the church. COVID has already influenced the future with tragedies of businesses and organizations and the black church it was not exempt from that. This year, we're starting to see, we're entering a time where we're starting to see slowly improvements. The pandemic seemed to be behind us and there's some sense of life post pandemic as we return to church services. Churches had to pivot and change how they conducted weekly services, everything from cleaning and sanitizing, even communicating to its members. Today, we still continue to have a debate regarding mask or no mask vaccine or no vaccine. But one thing that remains the same, the church has work to do and the, a mission to fulfill. We need to continue to look forward to impacting the lives of the lost and believers while seeing what God has in store. It's hard to believe now that we're in the third month of 2023. As we move closer to mid-year, it might be a good time for you to start thinking, or us as a body of Christ to start thinking about 2024. Church planning and how we are going to impact the lives of the lost as well as believers. Remember that saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Because of COVID, no words have ever been more important or have more meaning. Today, it is important to plan. Planning helps us stay focused. It keeps us engaged to priorities. It moves us closer to achieving the Great Commission. We have to understand, my God, my God, my God. Jesus lived a perfect, sinless life. He established his church taught the gospel, 
and performed many miracles. He chose 12 men to be apostles, including Peter, James, and John. He taught them and gave them authority to teach in his name. In other words, he planned to make an impact and affect the lives of others. Say with me, impact. My God, my God, my God. We are tasked to impact the lives of others. Impacting lives. When we impact lives, I'm, I want to just say this real quick before I move on. It's important that we impact the lives of the lost. We want to be the different makers. That's what the church body. How do we go by impacting lives? We impacting lives by knowing where our church is going. First, church, I said this earlier, church is like a business. And it requires to have us a well-defined vision, mission, and a value statement that sets the direction of the organization. I remember when I first became a member of the church i knew as soon as i walked in the door what the church stood for and if i was a guest i was reminded because we quoted sunday after sunday our statement of faith we have to know what we stand for who we stand for and we have to move forward by making an impact in the lives of others. People are drawn to a compelling mission or vision. It gets them excited about being part of the body. It makes a difference. It is exciting when church members can share stories of the earlier days and celebrate the journey, how the church matured, how we developed, how we grew. It's important for us to make an impact. Impacting lives by creating an inviting atmosphere. It is unfortunate but true, we live in a consumer-driven society. People are naturally drawn to aesthetics of an appealing environment. People like to be proud of where they worship, so providing an environment that is comfortable, clean, and orderly is extremely important. Say with me, impact. We impact lives by creating a welcoming experience. There's not anything as awkward as for a church visitor to be ignored or to be overwhelmed by attention. Everyone wants to be greeted but not everyone is comfortable with being inundated by unwelcoming attention. Try to remember, most people who visit the church are looking for something. Most of the time it's time with God. They might be wanting to explore the Christian faith for the first time, or check to see if our church or the church they're attending, church culture is a good fit. Regardless, it is important to make that experience 
as positive as possible. We don't know. Someone could have had a difficult week. And a warm greeting reminds them that they're entering into a place where they will be treated differently than the way that the world treated them. Greetings is an important concept to a positive workshop experience. It shows the members and the guests that they are valued. It creates a connection that leaves the, leaves an impression. The one impact that was made in my life, and I don't mind sharing the story. I was uh, at our first visit to the church. My wife got sick. And um, she got sick at church and they took her into the lobby. And Mother Anderson, Mother Lofton, and several of the church mothers prayed down heaven. After they prayed down heaven, they put us in the car and they told us to come home. But the one thing that I remember that made an impact on me is that they would not close the door until we told them that they'll see us next Sunday. Mother Anderson and Mother Lofton, you guys and they've probably never heard that story, but that's the one impact that you guys made on us. You kept saying, we'll see you next Sunday. We'll see you until we respond. We have to make an impact on the people's lives. I recall every Sunday, as the people left the church, Bishop Anderson standing in the foyer, greeting the members and the guests, making an impact, making them feel welcome each Sunday as they visit the house of worship. How many of us know that our behavior in the church can easily impact the lives of others? Impacting the lives of others by caring for our church members. Church members are one of the key customer groups in the church. We have to understand their unique needs and ensure that the needs are met. And these needs have to be met within the scope and the vision of the church. It is critical for our churches and our church growth scenario. All churches have volunteer opportunities. And us as a church body, we need to make sure the training in the communication process is a good experience. When volunteers are given a job and a responsibility, we need to make sure that they know what is expected of them and that they have the resources needed to do the job successfully. The goal is to provide support for the worshipers' needs. Having said that, there are people who sometimes make unreasonable demands for things, and sometimes these things don't line up with the mission or the vision of the church. That can be difficult to deal with. People of God, we need to know that some people are unreasonable and we need to just let them move on i know i'm not the pastor i'm just saying impact impact lives by providing opportunities to serve it is core 
It is the core of all of us to desire to serve others. Jesus did it as a Christian. We need to provide an opportunity to help other people. So whether it's serving meals to the less fortunate, organizing a mission trip, providing security, or helping others in times of crisis, opportunities to serve offers members a chance to use their gifts to help God's people. Every member every member online should have a role in the church. Serving makes you visible. It makes visible your commitment to Christ and his people. God is not unjust. He will not forget your works and the love that you have shown to him as you help people to continue to help them. When it comes to serving others, we are encouraged to make it an act of faith. Serving in your local church is a vehicle of discovering how we are made and how God can use us. Impact, stand with me, people of God. In today's society, we need to impact lives by embracing the new normal. Churches have changed dramatically since March, 2020. Churches had to scramble to facilitate streaming services during the peak shutdown, many people had choose to worship from home because of their fear of health issues. Embrace this new norm. We have to embrace it and find ways to engage these members. Consider this new era of online church as an opportunity to reach more people. Let's look at the positive. The use of social network and YouTube for sharing and to encouraging messages of hope. We have more opportunity to reach more people in today's society. COVID has changed the church forever. So let's make a point to embrace the new norm. We have to find creative ways to engage with those who may never step foot in a church at this time. We have to impact the lives of others. Impacting lives by enjoying the ride whether you're the pastor, a business administrator, a deacon, an elder, the church secretary. We are all called and should be ready to impact the lives of others. And while fulfilling that, we need to make sure that we have balance by spending time with God, which will fill our call and our anointing to do what is need to be what's needed to be done in the church. Here's a quote that I want to share with you. Don't get caught up in the ministry of the Lord that we forget. Don't get so caught up in the ministry of the Lord that we forget the Lord in the ministry. Ah, it's a powerful quote. If God called you into the ministry, don't take your call lightly. Spend time with him and he will instruct you in, way, in the way that you should go. 
Pastor Edge, I'm at the uh, seven o'clock hour. Do you want me to keep going or do you want me to uh, stop right here? No, no, let's go a little longer. Let's, let's yes, sir. Thank you. This is good. I'll, I'll, I only have two more uh, to go and then I'll finish up. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about my next subject. First of all, let's be remindful that we need to make an impact in the lives of others, whether it's in the church, outside the church, someone should always see the Christ in you. So as the scripture say, we need to wake up from our slum slumber. And we need to, as Mother Lofton may say, keep it moving. Diversity. Diversity, our scripture comes from Romans 12 and 6. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. The church needs diversity. When the body of Christ reflects diversity, when the body of Christ reflects a diverse yet unified family, we are more effective in the service to God, to one another, and to the world around us. From gifts of preaching, administration, and hospitality, each can play a vital role in overcoming, vital role in the overall unity and function of the church. People of God, my God, my God, my God. As long as the sender holds, I'm going to say that again. As long as the center holds, our differences won't make the church weaker. There's an essential element for making us stronger. Diversity is one of the greatest tools for survival and strengthening the church for this coming generation. Today, people usually gravitate to those who are more like them. There are some advantages of increasing diversity in the church. Not only is it mandated by God, but it includes people in his callings. The Bible tells us that in Matthew 28 and 18. But it would also make the church better. Nobody wants to go any place and look around and don't see anything that does not look like them. We have to have a diverse ministry. We have to have children. We have to have young adults. We have to have the middle age and we have to have a very diverse atmosphere in order to remain healthy, to reach the loss. Diversity provides, say this with me, diversity provides more. I'm going to say that again. Diversity provides more. It provides more talent, more skills, more gifts. More diverse people will bring a greater variety of gifts. It's just a fact. When we include people of different ages, different cultures, different backgrounds, it opens up the talent pool to our next musician, to our next teacher, to our next missionary, to our next minister, to our next deacon, to our next pastor. It develops leaders. 
Our diverse congregation is more creative. They know what it takes to cast a wider net because there's more representation within the midst. There's nothing that I can tell the younger generation what they're experiencing because their experience is going to be different from mine. What it does, diversity, it opens more doors. When your church is more diverse, those who visit are more comfortable coming inside. It creates a wider front door. The more diverse the church is, the more clearly you can see God's image in display. As a body of Christ, we shall always be looking for ways to increase the numbers and the types of disciples our church is making. This means reaching out to people from different cultures, different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different race, different social society, different levels, different age groups. The better the representation of each group in the church, the better equipped we are to attract, to impact the lives of the lost and the believers. But in doing so, we have to have more sensitivity to God's heart, creating. God created human beings in his own image. From Adam and Eve to all the people on earth, we come in various races, shapes, sizes, personalities. We have different passions, and even our perspective may be different. The more diverse the church is, the more clearly we can see God's image in display. This also increases the sensitivity of our hearts of our people. We will begin to see them not as a demographic, but more as a precious soul that needs the Savior. And there's no better way to view another person but as a soul that needs our Savior. We have to have a more helpful perspective. By having a more diverse church, we, as we cast this wider net, we get to view and see the problems within the community, within the world. And then we can intentionally attack, take heed and observe the viewpoints. But when we do, our church will be better off for it. We may not realize it, but failing to interact with people who are different from you limits our ability to communicate, to lead, and to energize. Broadening our scope, our net, increases the capacity of the discipleship. It draws more people to meet the needs, to help, to apply God's word to their life. Growing in diversity takes an intentional effort. But the advantage is well worth it, well worth the investment. God has placed you in a community for a reason. He's placed you in a church for a reason. And we need to intentionally take steps to bring into our congregation a more diverse body from outside the walls of the church. That means the young, the old, the sick, the lame, the lost. Where does the healing take place? In the body of Christ. When diversity is on display in the house of worship, know 
that the future is in our hands. When is the future? The future is now. I have some more, but I am way past my time. I just want to close out by saying the future is in our hands in 2023. Just like COVID impacted the church in 2020, impacted our lives. It's going to require COVID in 2023 to impact the lives of the lost. It's gonna require change. It's gonna require opportunities. We have to have a vision. We have to impact and we have to diversify. I thank you for this time of teaching. I pray that this message has blessed someone. And uh, I pray that God's will be upon everyone. Pastor Edge, if you don't mind, can I pray real quick? I feel it in my spirit uh, that I need to pray for not just our body, but the bodies everywhere. Go, go ahead and pray and close it up. I, I can say my prayer to your commentary, Pastor. I'm sorry. Bow your heads in prayer. Precious and kind, God, Father in heaven, Father, we thank you, God. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for this lesson, God. We thank you, God, for giving us the opportunity once again to be online, God. Father, we ask, God, that this, this lesson, that our future is in our hand, has impacted us, has encouraged us, God, not only to move forward in you, God, but, Father, that we may move forward in your will, your will for the church, your will for our lives, that we may, God, embrace change that we may god father take advantage of opportunities in utilizing our gifts and that you keep a vision a vision of growth a vision of excellence upon us and that not only that you keep a vision upon us god but God, that you move with power and might in our presence, God. Father, we want to just thank you, God. Thank you, God, for impacting our lives. Not only impacting our lives, God, but allowing us to be an impact to others. Give us strength, give us the tools that we need. And Father, we just wanna reference you, God, and praise you, God. And Father, as you do your will, God, not only in our lives, but in our body, our body of Christ, our church, that you continue to diversify it, continue to allow it grow, to grow, continue to place an anointing that we may reach greater heights. And we access in the name of Jesus, God. Father, we move into this new season of 2023, God giving thanks, but also with expectation. Expectation of a spirit of excellence, expectation of growth, an expectation of impacting the loss and uplifting 